I want to read a passage of scripture to you in Matthew chapter 24, verses uh, 33 through 34. It goes like this. So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's about um, going on 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hope everybody's doing well. I have a couple of uh, Bible prophecy updates. I'm just going to call them Bible prophecy updates. It's not going to be a full-on Bible study this evening, but I am going to mention a few scriptures to you all. Um, I want help to help people understand um the ones who are what they're looking at and then the other group of people who aren't paying attention at all to, I hope you'll give me a few minutes of your time anyway um, so that I can tell you what the Bible is saying, what we're looking at. Yesterday in the Bible study, I talked about how in the world there's a lot of smoke and mirrors because there's deception everywhere. You don't know who to trust. You see things happening and, you know, some of it's true, but then you're like, what's the angle they're using? <laughs> you know, like, what's the reaction to whatever it was we just saw? And, you know, it can be confusing, okay? And so the smoke in the mirrors of this world is what Satan is in charge of, all right? The smoke in the mirrors. But when we're in the scriptures, as I mentioned yesterday, we're above the smoke in the mirrors. We're looking at what's happening on the earth through the lenses of scripture, which gives us a perfect... Um, bird's eye view of what's really happening okay so that's why i come on and do these bible studies and sometimes i call them bible prophecy updates or just a regular bible study okay um but they're very very important and um i want to talk about a couple of things that are happening uh in a, in a few minutes okay and then here's the other thing i want to i want to i just shared this on facebook just a few minutes ago before i came on um let me see if i can find it here oh yeah Somebody shared this on my timeline, which was really cool. Um, this lady gave it to me, and she said, The most important decision we need to make. She quotes John 3.16, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. But Romans 10, 9 is a call to action, okay? But the call to action is learning who Jesus is. Um, I never thought in my lifetime that I would actually have to explain to people who Jesus is. But we're living in these final moments before the rapture of the church that we have to actually tell people who the real Jesus is, okay? Romans 10, 9 is a call to action based on your... Uh, understanding of who Jesus is and what he did for you. But as Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 24, there'd be many false Christs, many people claiming to represent him, okay? And false messiahs, by the way, too. Literal false messiahs. But we're talking also about organizations. Um, and by the way, I was quoting some scripture yesterday in the book of uh, 1 John, and one of the uh, viewers corrected me. Um, I was bouncing back and forth between... Um, some scriptures that Paul was telling us and then John and I mentioned Paul so he's like hey weren't you in John and I'm like you know you're right I stand, stand corrected um so if you, you got y'all got confused about that no it was John speaking but I mentioned Paul but I was bouncing back and forth between Paul and John because you know um sometimes that's what happens when we get to rolling okay but yes sir I stand corrected on that thank you very much um getting back to Romans Paul writing okay um, he, he says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Okay. Now listen to this prayer that she put here. This is pretty cool. And I'll get to the Bible prophecy update, I promise. Good evening, Debbie, Mark, uh, James. Good to see all of you. Thank you very much for tuning in. And Brother Scott, um, please share this video, okay? And uh, let's get this, this stuff out far and wide. This has nothing to do with me at all. It has everything to do with eternity and helping people find the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus in the Gospels. Um, and preferably, 
preferably King James Version, all right? You can get saved in other versions. It's very true. But once you start to learn who your Savior is and you start to really, really want to zero in on what he's telling us, then you're starting to understand. You're like, I want to get the most accurate translation in English that I can get so that I'm not missing anything or anybody's manipulating his his statements. Listen to this prayer that she put. She says, and I love this one. Thank you, Deb. Thank you very much. God bless you. Um, Brother Anthony just sent me a notification. Brother Anthony Harper is with Intermountain Christian News. He's over at the White House all the time. Um, let me, before I read this prayer, let me tell you what Brother Anthony says. Um, regarding Israel, miraculously, thank God I was called uh, on again in the State Department to ask questions of the spokesman, Matthew Miller. Good for you, Brother Anthony. I will share his um, YouTube video. Um, he was called upon for a question, so bam. Every time Brother Anthony gets um, called on to ask a question, that's a victory for us because he's like the lone Christian voice in that room, in the press conference room with John Claude, or I'm sorry, not John, John Pierre, okay, and a lot of them, but this was with the spokesman, Matthew Miller. It's always a, it's always a victory for us when Brother Anthony gets to ask a question. All right, here's the prayer. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross from the um, and rose from the dead to save me from my sins. I want you to be with you in, in heaven forever. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins that I have committed against you. I open my heart to you now and ask you to come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It, how hard was that? But that prayer right there is beautiful. It's perfect. To me, it's perfect. I mean, not for everybody, but it's perfect to me because that prayer acknowledges to the Lord that we're sinners, that we needed him, that he died for us. And that's the Jesus that I believe in. So I don't want people to get confused when I tell them that believing in Jesus is not enough. All right. I say that sometimes, but the reason why I say that believing in Jesus is not enough is because there's many Jesuses out there. Okay. There's, there's different versions of Jesus that Jesus himself condemns go to the go to the book of revelation and look at how he judges those churches so harshly except for the philadelphia church okay that's why that's why we're living in a unique time now where we actually have to tell people who jesus is all right and then they have the decision to make yes do you believe in jesus what he did for you on the cross that one that's so important to mention now all right here we go with the prophecy updates okay I quoted Matthew chapter 24, verses 33 through 34, and I said, So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Was Jesus talking about something a long time ago, or was he talking about a certain generation that would see his second coming? Well... Honestly, to me, I understand that this is the fig tree generation that he's talking about. He's talking about the fig tree generation. Um, but here's the other thing. A lot of what happens in Scripture, a lot of what's mentioned in Scripture, has to do with things that happened in the past because there is a replay going on, okay? Um, in Scripture, a lot of times, what we understand as types and shadows of things to come is that the Bible will tell us a story about something, all right? For example, Sodom and Gomorrah or the Noah generation. And Jesus will bring up those two generations and say, it will, when he comes back, it'll be like that. So it's like a replay, you understand? So like, could Jesus have been talking about um, some of the tribulations that the early church would see, you know? A lot of times, yes. But in this situation right here in Matthew 24, 33, he's clearly talking about the generation that we're living in right now, the one that Israel is alive and well in right now. Very, very important to make that distinction because not everybody knows that or understands it. So we want to tell everybody that's listening um, what's being said here. Why is this so exciting to me in this passage of Scripture? Is because we, if you're, you're alive and breathing right now, you have been born in the figure generation. The fig tree generation is Israel being reborn in 1948. Incredible, incredible. And he talked about a parable of the fig tree. And the fig tree is Israel. 
That's why this is so exciting. This is so exciting because Jesus is talking about this generation that we're in right now. And what does he say here? He says, you're going to know when you see certain signs, okay? Not certain dates, not picking a date or, or an hour that my coming is, you know. He's not talking about that. He's talking about the signs. And he says, when you see all of these signs, which we've read multiple times in Matthew 24 about earthquakes, wars, famine, pestilence, all of that, in the fig tree generation, all right, let's keep everything in the proper context. In the fig tree generation, when you see these things as a woman in labor ramping up, ramping up, he said, um, you, when you see these things, you will know that it's near even at the very door. Um, and I believe myself that there's probably some more signs that we're probably going to see that are going to tell the church, the ones who are paying attention, just like, wow, okay, now <laughs> it's at the very door, okay? And this is why I came on to give you this passage of scripture to read this. Now, I'm going to take you over here really quick to, um, let me do this, okay? Let me show you two articles from nowtheendbegins.com. I love their work over there. They're doing a fantastic job and I love to go over and check out what they're doing because they're on top of it. You know, I don't feel, I don't have to feel like the Lone Ranger out here because there's other people that are seeing what's going on and they're getting some real time news in for us who are paying attention. And so like, I don't have to be the Lone Ranger running out on social media, um, going and going through the fog, <laughs> you know. Um, thank you, Brother Scott. I appreciate you always being here whenever you can. And Debbie, uh, Fig Tree Generation is close to aging out. Boy, is that true, Deb. I just wish people understood that. And sadly to say, many people don't understand it, Deb. And that's why we do what we do online here. And that's why I hope that we can snag some people and get their attention. And that includes even some Christians that have been lulled into a sense of... Um, I want to say maybe callousness or mm, ho-hum every day. We see this all the time. But there's certain signs that Jesus said to look for that indicate that his coming is very near. And we're talking about first the rapture and then the second coming seven years later. In world history, ladies and gentlemen, seven years is just a blip. A blip. It's like nothing. Seven years is nothing. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about the rapture or the second coming. To me, it doesn't matter because seven years is a blip in human history. It really is, you know, but there is a distinctions and they are important to make sure that we're understanding the difference when it's mentioned in scripture. Absolutely. Because people argue for days about, you know, oh, he wasn't talking about the rapture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nobody's stealing my crown of righteousness. All right. It means me being eligible for it. It's completely up to the Lord whether I get it or not. And it doesn't, you know, I'm just happy that I'm saved, okay? But I'm paying attention. And um, Paul says there's laid up a crown of righteousness for me. He said, but not only for me, for everybody who loves his appearing. So like when you love his appearing, it means that your motives are correct. There's Christians out there that are not looking forward to his appearing. Can you imagine that? Mm-hmm. I don't understand that. I mean, I guess... To some degree, when you feel like you're stumbling and you're not doing very well, um, and you're like, God, I need more time to get my act together, <laughs> I understand that, okay? We're all trying to get our act together a little better <laughs> all the time. But just understand this, guys and gals, is that we're never guaranteed tomorrow anyway, okay? Whether it's the rapture or we go some other way. And um, most likely for many of us, we're going to go the other way and not the rapture. But don't know. We're, the, the rapture is called a blessed hope. And that's what we hope for. And it's called blessed. Right? So I'm not letting anybody steal that from me. It doesn't matter what people think. If they're inconvenienced about that or um, that they, they don't like us talking about it. I don't care. Like I, I'm looking forward to it and I'm watching. Right? Amen, Debbie. All right. Now the Indian says, uh, I'm going to mention two articles. I'm not reading the whole thing. But I want to tell you why I quoted that in Matthew 24 just a few minutes ago. Because I'm looking at what's happening in Israel right now, okay? Um, Israeli troops launched their first ground raid into Gaza last night out of an all-out invasion that's being prepared with the United States. Um, Israeli troops and tanks launched an hours-long ground raid into the northern Gaza overnight into Thursday. 
the military said, striking several militant targets in order to prepare the battlefield for a widely expected ground invasion after more than two weeks of devastating airstrikes. This is nothing new under the sun. I mean, if you all remember the Gulf Wars that we had, we pound the heck out of the enemy's um, strongholds with the Air Force until we soften them up when we're preparing our ground invasion. This is nothing new. Like, I've seen this in my lifetime before. And CNN and all mainstream media, they love to, you know, film wars. They love war. They love death, all of that. I don't. I don't, I don't like to gawk at videos like, you know, unless something Bible prophecy is looking, I'm looking through Bible prophecy, then it gets my attention. But um, I don't like be one, being one of those people that drive on a freeway and I have to slow down and see what happened in the accident. Like, I pray for them, but I, I don't want to, I'm not, a, I'm not a gawker, you know, like, it's just not appealing to me. I want to pray for people that are hurt and stuff, but um, this, this, uh, this, Ground invasion, though, is it's ramping up and nothing's going to stop it, by the way. All right. It's very interesting to me how um, God is still using the United States to help Israel, even regardless of what Joe Biden's motives are, whether it's to funnel money back to the Democrats through signing executive orders for money, you know, to Israel, etc. He's still, God is still using the United States, which is really incredible to me. I'm very happy about that, by the way. But, um, but we have... <laughs> We're just a tool, okay? There's a lot of, of bad things that are happening in our country right now. And believe me, God's angry about it. And I think a lot of people hang on to that scripture that says that um, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their sins, their wicked ways, that I'll, I, I will heal their land. You know, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Um, so it's always been up to the church to do that. But at the same time, we understand that Bible prophecy has to be fulfilled and we understand that there's a rapture. So God has a plan to remove his church eventually. Like it's going to be past the point of no return to where, you know, um, yeah, these people are going to have to deal with God's wrath, you know. Good to see you, um, Annie. Really good to see you. Thank you for coming on this evening. I'm looking at a couple of articles on Now the End Begins. So this ground invasion is probably going to be happening pretty soon. I don't see anything calling it off. I really don't. Um, here's what Jeffrey is saying over here. And I'm gonna, this other article to me is even more significant than this one. Okay, so hang on. And then I'll be done, okay? But I need to, get, I need to let you all know why I think that our, the Lord's coming is near at the very door. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Last night it began, the beginning of what, uh, we may look back on this as the actual start of World War III. Don't get me wrong, the events of October 7th are horrific. Vile, terrifying to the nth degree, but what Hamas did couldn't start World War III. As we have seen, global support for Hamas is disgustingly and insanely high. And demonically high, by the way. We understand Satan is the god of this world, but we're not going to be quiet. We're not going to shut up when evil things are happening. We're going to raise our voices up and we're going to call those evil people out. That's what we do, alright? Um... But defending Israel themselves, I mean, really defending themselves, could start World War III, absolutely. Here's a scripture that he quotes in Deuteronomy 28, 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee, wherever the, whither the Lord shall lead thee. More than a world witnessing the hatred of the Jews by Hamas and the Palestinians. And yeah, we have been watching the global hatred of the Jew in nation after nation around the world. The actual story nestled in all of this end times craziness and its prophetic fulfillment. What happened in 1933 Nazi Germany was a type and picture of the soon coming time of Jacob's trouble and the time of the great tribulation from your King James Bible. How bad things will like how will how bad will things get when Israel launches the full ground invasion? So bad that the United States military is right now installing dozens of missile batteries around the Middle East to protect Israel, but the American military uh, from what's coming. That's where we are on day uh, three nineteen of fifteen days to flatten the curve. Why does Jeffrey mention that? Because all this craziness started 
with uh, the COV ID. Now, do you all remember, I know that not everybody in this video is going to remember what I said, but you all understand, my, the people that are on my group with me, you remember what I keep talking about, about Revelation chapter 12, right? How that woman, the sign of the woman in the constellations in um, 2017, that constellation formed again, and it has not formed since the birth of Jesus Christ, and it formed in 2017. And we had every Democrat, liberal, demon-possessed person in this country trying to throw Trump out when he was president. Amazing that man got as much done as he did during his tenure. You know, even moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. <laughs> Getting the Abraham Accords, he had, a, he had a hand in that. Getting the Abraham Accords started. Um, what is that? What is, why do I bring up Revelation 12? Because that's a sign. Understand? We look, we watch the signs... And immediately when that constellation was formed out there of the woman who represents Israel, by the way, it was like, people say, David, what does that mean, the woman out there? It means that God is telling the humanity, especially um, Christians and Jews, that sign is for you, okay? If you're paying attention, the world's not going to pay attention or not care at all. But those of you who are paying attention, look at that sign I've got up there. See that up out there in the constellation that reformed? That woman, that's Israel. That's my people. Okay? And there was another sign, a dragon, that's pursuing the woman. What does that mean? Well, it means all of this demonic hatred that Jeffrey's talking about right here in the article. Around the world, the hatred for, for Israel. Okay? And um, um, COVID started, I'm sorry, C-O-V-I-D. COVID started in um, um, at the end of, like, 2019. And then in Revelation 12, it says war broke out in heaven and uh, Michael and his angels are currently fighting Satan's his angels right now. And that spiritual battle that's literally happening out there as I speak is manifesting itself on the earth in the forms of the how people are reacting. You want to know all this demonic hatred and, and everything for Israel and what, why we're seeing this in the spike and you see this crazy, wicked, evil generation doing what it's because Satan, that's his, that's his turf, okay? And the turf of, of Michael and his angels are helping us, helping the church, helping the body of Christ, the, the Philadelphia church more specifically, helping us. We're the salt, we're the salt of the earth. We're the ones who are trying to help people get saved. We're trying to tell people what's going on. And yes, that's how accurate scripture is if people are paying attention. That's a big if. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I am, honestly, and this is why I do what I do, why I come on here. And I'm trying to catch people, you know, our group, we're trying to catch people for Jesus. And I know I'm not the only one. You aren't the only one. There's, I see it on my timeline. I see people, I, it's crazy. I see Facebook exploding with scriptures all over the place. There's lots of Christians out there. And I'm like, this is very cool. It's like, did Facebook be, all of a sudden become a Christian social media? <laughs> because I see scriptures all over. I'm like, <laughs> we're in enemy territory. Just, we're pelting Satan right now michael and his angels are pelting satan with the word of god and the truth while the church is still here okay even when we're removed that god's going to still continue to warn this world in, in his mercy to repent turn around all right but all right so that's this article about this ground looming ground invasion this is going to be a game changer now here let's go over to the other article really quick and then i'm done okay this one oh let me do this okay let me do this really fast i'm going to give this to you guys in um do, 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 do. Let me do this. All right. Thank you for sharing, Debbie, by the way. I appreciate that, the video. Um, okay, so there's the first article that I mentioned. And now, um, if you all want to comment, <clears throat> you can go into the comment section down at the bottom of Now the End Begins. And I advocate our group to start getting involved. If you feel the, you know, if you feel you can do it, get in there and get down into the comment section and help me, well, uh, help me support his ministry with what the work that he's doing, he's on, you know, his ministry has been under attack all year long and people say and do stupid things all the time. And so, you know, I understand that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God, right? Nobody's perfect, but, but Jeffrey and his team of people are trying to do the right thing over there. All right. And that's all I see. And I understand that we all have weaknesses. We all do, you know, like I don't need to know all that stuff about someone's personal life 
my personal life, you know, that's my personal life is my personal life. What happens is, is when you start getting, when you start really impacting for the world, for God, and, and you're making a difference, Satan's going to rear his ugly head up and try to trash you and, and, you know, even if there's some truth behind anything that you, you know, in your personal life, he'll bring it out and try to ruin you because he doesn't want you giving messages like what I'm giving right now. He does, I'm telling you, they, you know, Satan's on a leash, okay, but, but he would love to just devour me if he could, but God won't let him do it right now because my work's not done yet. <laughs> So, but I say he would love to devour me. He would love to devour other ministries that are, that are doing these things like we're doing right now because it's so important. And I want to make this mention too, and I'm going to sprinkle little seeds of encouragement to y'all while I go through this. Okay. And we're almost done, by the way. I promise you, I'm almost done. There's people out there that don't have a clue. All right. Just understand that. And I'm not telling you that, I'm not saying that in an insulting way at all. We live in a generation that's biblically illiterate. Just understand. And it's not their fault. A lot of times people are victims to society and, and suppression. It's not because they have a prideful heart or they hate Jesus or they hate God or anything like that. They just don't know. They don't know and they want they want to know. They want to know. And they, they have their opinions about what's going on or they see this or that and they get they get all caught up in mainstream media and they have opinions, but they're like they need somebody to come along and tell them the truth about what's happening and what God's getting ready to do. And that's what we should be doing. The church, this is what we should be doing. We need to help people find Jesus. And boy, am I ever going to do that as much as I can. Nothing can stop me unless God tells me I'm done. Okay, no, no family member, no friend, no church member, nobody's going to stop me from doing what I'm doing because God's got me on a mission right now and i'm not saying that out of rebellion or someone's always welcome to come along and correct me like people do sometimes come along correct me whatever but you know when you're born to do something and you know I, i've had a life of very good success most of my life i've played a lot of sports i've done a lot of things i had a lot of fun with my dad that was i'll never those are treasures that i'll carry with me into eternity but now this time that i'm seeing the focus of my life has completely changed. And I'm looking at what's happening. And I'm going to read this other article, pieces of it in a second. I'll tell you why we're so close. It's like being in, drafted into the military. And you're in the military and you really can't go home and relax with your family because of what you're seeing. You're in a, you're in a battle. Michael and his angels are fighting Satan and his angels right now. So like, you've got to pick a side. All right, You've got to start waking up if you love God. You got to start waking up and you got to start getting in it. Okay. You're not going to have peace until you understand that God's family, we're all productive. We do things. Okay. We get things done. We, we, we try to listen to what the Lord wants us to do and we try to do it. And then we feel good when we do it because we know that's what we were born to do. So, um, let me give you this other article. All right. Here's why I'm telling you. I gave you Matthew chapter 24 verses 33 through 34. This is a bullseye that I gave you. Because we're living in this generation. And Jesus made this promise. He said, this is the generation. He said, it will not pass until all these are, things are fulfilled. What does that mean? What things? His second coming. Everything, you know, <laughs> in the fig tree generation that we're seeing. He says, you're going to see all of it, even my, my coming. But you're not going to know the day and the hour. But you got to be ready. you got to be watching the signs. I love that, man. I mean, I don't want to know the day and the hour, to be honest with you, for the rapture. I don't want to know that. I don't. I would rather be on my tippy toes paying attention exactly what God prescribed for us to be doing, right? Keeps us sharp. Now, here we go. Look at this other article here. Let me share. I'm going to share this article with you in the chat. All right. Emmanuel Macron and Joe Biden are leading the charge to divide the land of Israel on the day after the war with Hamas and Gaza is over. Whoa-hoom. That's it, guys. That's it. I'm telling you, this is, I mean, if if that gets accomplished, <laughs> let me let me read Dave's statement really fast. Everyone has a gift and a purpose. Amen. Yes, sir. We do, Dave. And, um, you know, everybody knows what their gift is, pretty much. There's some people who may not know, but they, you know, God has given us all a talent or something to do. And 
Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be a preacher or a Bible teacher or anything. Or if you want to be one. And if you want to go out and be a fisher of men. And I was standing on the Sea of Galilee this year in July. And there's this great big statue of Peter on the Sea of Galilee. And he's, he's he looks really cool, by the way. When I was standing next to him and my, my tour guide, Tal, was saying... He gave a little message about Peter being a fisher of men, but then he became a shepherd because Jesus told him to tend my sheep. So you see how Peter graduated from becoming a fisher of men to becoming a shepherd. And Jesus commanded Peter and he said, tend my sheep. So whatever your gift is, okay, it doesn't matter. Like, And you don't have to feel, there's a cool thing about this, guys. You don't have to feel inferior to anybody in the body of Christ. Nobody. It doesn't matter if you're a good speaker or not. God has given you a gift. And that's where you need to be. And it's like, you know, when I go to the gym, I'm sorry for bird walking, but I want to make an example to help people understand how to look at this the right way. Okay? And then I'm going to look at this article. It's like when I go to the gym, okay? Or when I was in sports. You all see how long my arms are? See how long my arms are? All right? Not everybody has long arms like me. And when I was boxing, when I played basketball and stuff, my long arms were very, very useful. But they were not short arms, and they didn't have great big biceps on them. You know, like I have biceps, but they're not gigantic, and they're not like these big old huge broad shoulders. And, you know, like some people would go into the gym, and they go, oh, I want to look like that guy. I want to look like the guy that's got the great big arms, and their big shoulders, and their big chest, and like, that's going to be amazing. But you know, God created me to look a certain way. And and so what I did, what I, I come to understand is like, I hone what God gave me, okay? My genetics, whatever God gave me is not what that guy has. And he doesn't have what I've got, okay? But I hone in, I go into the gym and I sculpt what I have so that I'm bringing out the best of what God gave me. Does that make sense? So transitioning into life for by, for serving God all of you are worried about like, oh, I have to be like this person. You don't have to be like this person or that. God gave them a certain gift or a certain amount of faith to do what they're doing. And he's given you your special gift. All right. You focus on you focus on your gift. Don't worry. Don't be envious of that person next to you or whatever they're doing. Don't be, you know, if they're serving God, you know, hey, all right, cheer them. I cheer Now the End Begins. I cheer some other ministries. I cheer Hal Lindsey. Hal Lindsey is 95 or so years old. He doesn't look like a 95-year-old, by the way. And, you know, I mean, some people are like, oh, well, Hal Lindsey didn't say it like this, or, you know, he might have got a few things wrong in his life. Whatever. Like, amazing. The guy is old, but he's still plowing, man. That's, in, that's like endurance. Come on. That's endurance. Don't you want, like, that's a gift. <laughs> um... And uh, Dave says, look, I'm lucky uh, you see God puts us right where he wants us. Yeah, exactly, Dave. Um, uh, you know, and so the body of Christ is called a body. Paul calls this a body that we all are different members in the body and we all have different gifts, but we're working together for the same purpose. And um, these Bible studies that I, I, I'm going to make in the future whatever time that we have. I'm going to talk a lot about that because not only, you know, salvation, I don't want to call salvation like ground zero, but grounds, when you get saved, that's where you start. Okay. And then you've got to learn the next thing that you've got to learn when you get saved is that Satan can't steal your salvation. And then you grow and then you start growing and you're like, okay, now I'm past that other point in my life. Now I understand that God has got me free that I can do things to serve him, to glorify him, okay? Not because my works are going to get me to heaven. Not one good work will get us to heaven. But we want to glorify our Father in heaven and do the right thing. And that's through our gifts, okay? Whatever we're gifted with. Emmanuel Macron and Joe Biden are leading the charge to divide the land of Israel on the day after the war with Hamas and Gaza is over. Let me get you this, okay, and then I'll get on out of here. Biden in the United States... And Macron in France are separately pushing for a revival of a two-state solution peace process after the end of the Gaza war. Do you want to know something? I knew this was going to happen. I don't know exactly about Biden and Macron, but I knew that when this whole thing happened in October 7th or 8th of, of this month, okay, I knew 
that, okay, this is serious because Israel declared war, that um, whatever dust settles from this conflict that we're looking at, which, by the way, <laughs> um, there's different levels of conflict. It's kind of like this, okay? It's like up and down. <clears throat> I knew I, I, this is what I feel in my heart, and I feel like, and I feel like now the end begins is confirming what I'm saying. Is like when this little conflict or whatever this, I mean, it's not little, but everybody's all, oh, World War Three. Look, the red horse doesn't ride until the church is removed. All right, the church has to be removed before the red horse of war rides. The red horse of war is nuclear. It's everything evil imaginable, and that red horse cannot ride until the church is, is gone. Now you think about, some of you that never watched this video, you think about that, okay? So don't get hyperventilating over World War III. Don't hyperventilate over World War III. If you're saved and a Christian, don't hyperventilate over it. If you're not saved, you can go ahead and hyperventilate all you want. <laughs> In fact, I think I'd be a little nervous if I were you, all right? If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus, then yeah, you'd, I'd be nervous. That is going to happen, but it's gonna happen after the rapture. He who now letteth will continue to let until he is taken out of the way and that man of sin be revealed. All right? The man of sin might be what I, this, in this article right here, it could very well be Emmanuel Macron. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, funny, yeah. Okay, check this out. You know, uh, what was it? Okay, this is interesting. All right, this is just, we're just playing around here with stuff here. Um, Emmanuel Macron is a candidate for Antichrist. There's no question he could be the beast. I don't know. He's a candidate. So like people say, oh, you don't know who the Antichrist is. It, it's probably Obama or something. Look, they both have a spirit of Antichrist in them. There's no question about that. But Macron is very, man, when you go on now, the end, they've done their homework on this dude. And I mean, there is a, whoa, there is some scary comparisons about him and that future beast that's coming. Now, Macron arrived in Israel, check this out, 18 days after um the uh, con after the attack of Hamas, eighteen literally eighteen days divided by three is what six six six. It's just a sign. It doesn't mean he's the Antichrist for sure, but it's kind of weird that he shows up in Israel exactly eighteen days after all this all this thing stuff happened. So divided by three, yeah, six six six, six twelve eighteen. Isn't that interesting? God is a god of numbers, by the way. He could be, you know, but we don't know for sure. But it's just something interesting. You know, and um, yeah, we, we don't know, Dave, for sure, but it's like you look at, here's the way I look at this with the Antichrist, and then I'll move on to the conclusion of this video. Um, when it comes to the Antichrist or who, who he actually is, um, you all have to understand one thing, okay? And, and I don't play into the whole identity thing too much, but I watch. And you, you have to understand that people that are going to be controlling nations, have to be groomed for that moment, okay? They have to be groomed. In other words, here's like an example. So like Prince Charles was Prince Charles for decades until he's an old man, and then he becomes King Charles, okay? When Elizabeth passes away, he becomes King Charles. He was groomed to become king for, for decades. The future beast has to be groomed for his moment. And so what we do as students is we're kind of looking at who the players are around, and we understand, we're like, okay, that guy has a spirit of Antichrist. That one has a spirit of Antichrist. Yep, yep, yep. You know, but we're like, okay, mm, it's interesting. The Pope is absolutely preparing the way for the Antichrist. Francis is definitely preparing the way for the Antichrist. He's got that world religious system in Abu Dhabi over there now. They opened that up this year. You all understand there's like a many, many things that are, are happening in Scripture that are being fulfilled right even in 2023. That one world religious center in Abu Dhabi, the Abrahamic family house, opened this year. Yes, Michael and his angels are fighting Satan and his angels as I speak. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. See, significant things, all right? John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus to come. Did he not? He did. So do you all think that there's going to be some, <coughs> excuse me, some people playing significant roles for that seven-year moment? You betcha. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. But do I play into that too much? The only way that I play into it is understanding how close we are to our Savior coming. That's why I pay attention to it. 
It's not because I want to know who the Antichrist is. It's not really that. It's for me personally. I'm just talking about me. I'm just like, okay, I see these things. So it's like, all right, so I understand that we're getting closer and closer to, to rapture. Let's, let me get through this, okay, and then I'll finish this off because I don't want everybody to get worn out. Um, here's what, what we're saying in this article. Let me, let me drop this in comments for y'all. Okay. Um, that in here. There you go. Okay. Now this is, this is why I believe it's so significant. I got to make this point and then, and then I'm done for now. Okay. So, um, oh boy. Biden in the United States and Macron in France are separately pushing for a revival of the two-state solution peace process after the Gaza war is over. We're now just a little past 3.5 years since the lockdowns began. Watching the end times continue to unfold at a furious rate. <coughs> we understand, perhaps on the cusp of World War III and certainly on the edge of what may be the largest war in the Middle East since World War II. The Jews were played a prominent role in World War II on a very bad, in a very bad way. It's terrible. Um, to my dying breath or raptured breath, I am going to support Israel and anybody who claims to follow Jesus. Jesus, his gospel was a gospel of love. It is a gospel of love. Jesus Christ's gospel is a gospel of love. And to hate the Jews is not a gospel of love. All right? And... I don't want some legal Pharisees coming at me and saying, well, they're, they're the ones that killed Jesus and, you know, like, blah, 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 blah. Look, y'all don't know, some of y'all don't know and understand what you're talking about at all. Israel produced the Bible. They produced the word of God for us. They gave us Jesus Christ. They gave, they're the ones that gave us salvation. Do you want to be honest about it? They gave us salvation. Why? Because Jesus is a Jewish carpenter. He was born in Israel in Bethlehem, okay? He came from the line of David. <laughs> Mic drop, that's good enough for me, all right? I am not going to curse Israel. You all, some of y'all can forget it. And, and, and Islam and people with a spirit of antichrist, you know what they have? They have a spirit of hatred in them. So if you have someone claiming to be a Christian and they hate Israel, they're not saved, guys. They're not Christians at all. They're pretenders. They're imposters. They're lying to themselves. When you have a born again experience, you have a you have a spirit of love in you. All right, you you love your enemies, you love your neighbor, you love Israel especially because they're God's people, hundred um, percent. And um, and Jeffrey quotes Joel one six for nation for a nation is come upon my land strong and without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek uh, teeth of a great lion. Joe Biden is not in charge of America. He is the puppet whose strings are pulled from behind the scenes by Barack Obama, currently in the midst of his third term. Make no mistake about it. The land of Israel will be divided or the prophets are wrong. Israel will be dri driven out of their land or Jesus spoke out of turn. The Antichrist will control this show for seven years or your Bible is not trustworthy. These things... I just mentioned are not maybe or one day someday they're locked in guaranteed promise from the scripture of truth disbelief at it uh, it at your own peril disbelief at your own peril wow guys I mean <laughs> he was being led by this Holy Spirit when he he wrote that in this article there's no question I 100% agree 100% agree with that like so that's when the land gets divided, like this is what so this is what blows me away. Y'all ready for this? If this is a big if, if the church, if the body of Christ, the Philadelphia church specifically in Revelation, if we're here to see Israel's land get divided, you know what that means? It means that God has determined in heaven to turn to take this to the seven year tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. It means he's turning the corner on the church age and the age of grace. If we're here to see that, Matthew 24, 33 and 34 says, uh, well, sorry, 34, Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass until all things are fulfilled. And then he says, when you see these things, know that it's near at the very door. 
that's not a day and an hour. But I'm like, look, guys, if some of the Christians, like, if we see that, like, you watch how crazy social media explodes if we see Israel's land divided and we're here. Like, it's going to, ex the church community, the ones who are watching, are gonna, it's going to explode. And I'm just a little grain of sand <laughs> in this mix, right? But I've been watching, and I'm like, oh, man, if that happens and we're still here, guys. We're gone. We're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. Dave, um, they would uh, like to kill kill us, too. Uh, look at the kid um, from, uh, sorry, Tapusa. What's Tapusa? Uh, beaten, and they were trying to help a Jewish family. I didn't even get to see that. I don't know what that is. But that, that doesn't surprise me that someone would get attacked for supporting the Jewish uh, Jewish family. And, um, boy, I'll tell you what, you know, I am blessed to live in a red state, by the way. I live in a red state, um, where we all have each other's back over there, you know, but like, man, when I see, like, if I see stuff like that happening, I'm getting involved. I'm not going to let evil people do what they do. And I will risk going to jail if I have to, to protect the Jewish people or Jewish community or, or just innocent victims. It's always the way I've been. Maybe to my own peril, you know, but it's just like, I can't sit back and watch evil people do things. I, if I have to step in to do something, I will. I would prefer not to, but I would rather just be in my Bible. But if I'm walking down a street someday and I see somebody being attacked, I'm probably going to be getting involved in the smartest way possible, but I'll try, you know, that's just the way that I am. Um, it's not a day or an hour. It's a season, Scott says. Um, yes, sir, Scott, it's a season. And, um, if anybody that's watching this video, that's not a Christian or you're on the fence about the rapture, um, you know, or this, even the second coming of Jesus Christ, understand this, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Bible teaches, Jesus specifically teaches us to look at a specific season. Okay. We're not picking a day and an hour for his coming. We're not like telling you, oh, it's going to happen in 2023. Although, it could. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just saying we're still to look at a season. And that's good enough. It's good enough. It keeps us on our toes. They had a Christian rally in the Palestinian and the Palestinians attacked them. Okay, I understand now. I see. Um yeah. Boy, taking a stand, guys. Taking a stand. Well, this is what we do. And um I'm gonna be in my local communities all winter long getting more involved, helping my pastor at church. It's an honor and a privilege to help them. They're so amazing. My pastor and, and his wife are amazing. I'm so thankful that God sent them to the church I'm going to. And I want to do everything I can to support them. And I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be on social media. And if anything significant happens, guys, understand that I will come on, even if it's for five minutes. I'll come on and share it with you guys and um, do whatever I can to keep everybody encouraged. And um, I think we've got this covered. Um, let me do this one last thing and then I'm done. I'm gone. Uh, <clears throat> it's this um, It's this prayer, okay? And I put this on my timeline. It's based off of John 3.16 and Romans 10.9. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know Jesus... Just pray this prayer, okay? Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me and rose from the dead to save me from my sins. I want to be with you in heaven forever. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins that I have committed against you. I open my heart to you and now, and I'm, I'm open my heart to you now and I ask you to come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, listen, if anybody that doesn't know Jesus just prays that simple prayer based on John 3.16 and Romans 10.9, um, you're, you're done. You're solid. You're going to heaven. You should be celebrating. All the angels will be if you do that. And that's why we do what we do, guys. You're welcome, Dave. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. And um, Debbie and Scott and, and some other people are coming in and out tonight. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and and so we're working together in the group. Our group is growing. And um, anybody that needs to know Jesus, you can message Dave, you can message Scott, you can message Debbie, you can message me. If you, you can see them in the chat room here, um, just send them a message. Don't be shy. 
Don't be shy about it. Just throw your questions out there if you have a question. Like, this is what we are here for. We're here to help people find Jesus Christ, okay? That's what we're doing. So, um, God bless you too, Dave, and everybody else. Okay, that's it for tonight. I'm going to send this off to social media. And we're going to keep we're going to keep watching. OK, we're going to keep watching. And that's what we do. God bless all of you tonight. Take care. I love you. And I'll see you very soon again uh, in the next study.